Hey guys, welcome back to the 4x2 Wagon Family. And today we're gonna to be installing some shocks in our JKU. These shocks I purchased from Metacloak and these are called the Rock Sport Long There's Long and There's Longer. These are the Longer uh, shocks. And these have a travel length of 29.7 inches. So if you guys are looking for a really nice budget shocks for your Jeep, truck, whatever, go check out Metacloak for 138 bucks for a pair of the front. And it's same for the rear as far as the price goes. So all in for somewhere around 350 bucks, which, you know, with taxes, that's not a bad upgrade. And today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to install shocks in your Jeep. And to show you guys how easy it really is, this is probably one of the easiest things you guys can do without breaking your bank um, and save yourself a ton of money by doing this yourself. So let's take a quick look at the actual Rock Sport Shock by Metacloak. And it's, it looks pretty nice. You know, you got they give you a nice little plastic cover that covers that the stainless steel piston uh, or you got the piston that goes into the, into the shock. So that's really nice. It looks and feels a lot like the Old Man Emu brand. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Old Man Emu, but they provide one of the better, you know, shock out there, suspension out there. Uh, this feels very similar, looks and feel. It's fire engine red. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really big on red. You know, this is kind of a Rubicon uh, color scheme. And, you know, it's cool, but I wish they would have left it. Kind of like that, um, the, what do you call that? The the zinc color that would have been kind of cool just to so, just so that all the color the zinc color the brown or the brass color you know um that's kind of what they're known for is that zinc coated or plated metal and i wish it would have kept this kind of similar but anyways you know for 300 some bucks it's not bad i'm not complaining so without further ado let's get started so like always before you guys get started you want to make sure you put a um, nice jack under your Jeep or truck before you guys start any project. Uh, so that's your life insurance. Then so, what you want to do is make sure you take your wheel off. And if you have um, wheel wall cover, make sure that comes off. Because then that's going to give you really easy access to the upper mount. And there's the lower mount right there. So this is an 18 millimeter bolt down below. So I was just getting ready to do this. And then I thought, ah, let me just put a quick video together. And don't mind that. That's just a gob of grease that I squirt a little extra in my, in my joint there. And I'll just kind of squirt it out. So I'm going to clean that up as well. Um, I've also bought some, <laughs> some um, bump stops for the front. Uh, as you guys can see, that's been hanging here for the last couple months. So I'm going to take this whole spring off and mount my new bump stop here as well from Metacloak. So one of the things I like to do before I start taking things too far apart is take your old shock and put it up to your current um, setup without doing anything extra other than taking your tire off. Put it up there and to make sure that once you get the shock up there, uh, you don't have to do any additional, you know, lifting of the axle and things like that because sometimes the actual shock itself might be longer. So then you have to kind of, you have to compensate um, how high you need to lower or raise your axle so that when you put in a new shock, you're not going to be fighting this um, with, you know, with all that's going on. So step one is once you get to this position here, take your old shock, get it here, line it up and, and see if you need to do any additional um, adjustments to the axle by lowering it or, 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 um, or dropping it. Okay, so in my case, um, the actual shock is about an oh, inch and a half shorter than what it is right now. So that's really great. That means I, don't, I can just keep everything as is, I'll mount my shock, knock it out, put my new shock in there, and then cut the tie and slide this bolt hole with the bottom lower bracket. So there's a little trick to that. So we'll get to that when we get to that point. But right now, let's go ahead and take our old shock off. Okay, so I got my 18 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket, and I'm just gonna knock out the bottom bolts first. Okay. 
Okay, so there's the bolt. The bolt just comes right off. Easy peasy. Okay, and the next thing we gotta do is we're gonna take the shock. Let me raise the camera a little bit higher here. We're gonna take the shock and we're just gonna knock it out this way and it's just gonna slide right out. Okay, and see how the shock gets longer? So that's what I mean by your new shock. You don't want this new shock to be longer than this bolt right here because to push this back up into the cylinder, man, it's really hard. Okay, so now all it's left to do is remove this upper bolt up here. And I'm not really sure what that bolt size looks like a 14 millimeter. So once that gets off, this whole thing would drop right off. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see up here. There, On the top of the bolt, there is a, a place where you need to put a wrench, or in this case, I just use a vice grips. And the bolt on the bottom, the nut, is actually a 14 millimeter. So holding the top uh, threaded bolt, you need to get uh, you need to get to the to the bottom 14 millimeter nut to knock it off without moving that uh, the threaded bolt because when you move the nut the whole bolt moves right so you need to hold something to hold it up there and if you have a 14 millimeter like a ratchet wrench that would be ideal but unfortunately my Harbor Freight uh, ratchet ratchet wrench broke so now I gotta do this manually so I'm gonna knock this off off camera then I'll be right back. Okay, so once you loosen that 14 millimeter nut off, the shock just drops straight down, just like that. And I gotta believe that this is probably one of the original shocks on this thing. I mean, it looks like, gosh, many years of, of build up on this thing. It's just nasty. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky here. When you get to the new shock, uh, you wanna do your best to keep this uh, banding on the shock and do not let it open. Uh, once you, because once you let it open, the shock is gonna start expanding and you're gonna have a very short window to get all this put together. Oh, like right now, it's, it's compressing right now. Or it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's expanding right now. Oh God. Okay, so, oops. Oh shit. Ah. So if it does expand, you can you can put the pressure down at the lower bottom of the, the shock bolt and just push the shock down. Okay, okay. So, whoop! I can feel it expanding in my hand. So when you when you do this, um, whoa, man! Here go, here it goes. Okay, so okay, so let me give you a little update. Uh, so this spacer was between between here and whoops, this rubber spacer was right inside that. So I took this off, and as you guys can see, that this little spacer right here has a little. Um, like a little lip on top. So that needs to go through the upper shock mount bolt. So this is how I configured mine. Okay. Okay, there you go. So it's gonna just kind of settle up there nicely. Um, at this point, you can kind of turn your, your rock sport emblem on the outside if you like. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this other big washer like this one, you're gonna put it on the top of the shock bolt. <clears throat> you meant to push it down a little bit. There it comes. And then this big, nice flat washer goes on top of that. And then another small washer goes on top of the, the, the dome-shaped washer. And then last, you've got this threaded, uh, nylon thread, uh, nut that goes, on, that goes right on top okay so that's just on their finger tight right now the next thing i gotta do is the hole doesn't quite line up down here so i gotta raise the shock just a skosh so that i can put in my factory bolt so i'm gonna do that off camera real quick and then i'll come back okay so i got that bolt in there so all of this right here literally took me less than 
I don't know, five minutes. Uh, it took me more time to kind of fiddle for it with the camera and all that. But this whole shock and taking the tire off, putting a shock on, it took me maybe five minutes. So that's how easy putting a shock on is in your Jeep or any car or truck out there. They're super simple. But the most important thing is make sure that when you, before you take the old shock off, get your new shock and kind of place it up there. Make sure everything looks um Hopefully the new shock will be just a skosh shorter than, than the old shock. Cause then when you put the new shock in there, you'll have room while that shock is expanding. Uh, you have a little bit of time to place that new shock in there and get it up in, a, in the right places without fighting that compression of the shock. All right. So all I gotta do now is put some, um, you know, red thread lock on these factory, factory nuts. And then tighten it all down, put the tire back on, then I'm done. All right, so what do you guys think? That was so fast, and I think it's going to be a really good upgrade. I can't wait to test it out this weekend. So if you guys have any questions, leave me those comments down below. And it would be great if you guys would like, share, and subscribe to my channel for other videos like this. So I'm Brian with the 4x2 Wagon Family. We'll see you guys on the trail.